Okay. It's currently midnight and four at my time locally, or 12 or 4 a.m. your time. I just woke up from a three hour nap because I took a nap at 21 or 9 p.m., like a moron. And I'm just gonna throw this together real fast. Uh, people have been asking, and by people I mean at least two, at least two, um, for a, an explanation on how to beat Vice City in 12 minutes. It's it's 12 minutes now is is what we beat it in. So I'm I'm gonna go over that real fast. I'm gonna watch the uh, <clears throat> world record video. So, the first thing we have to do is we gotta find the world record video. And that's really easy. Navigate uh, your web browser to your favorite uh, Google page. Uh, actually, oh, hold, hold on. Let me, uh... Do, 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 don't mind me. Okay. <clears throat> uh, go to your favorite Google website and, and type in speedrun.com. Okay. Uh, here it is, right here. Uh, then click on speedrun.com. All right, we're we're almost there. Stay with me. Go over here. Uh, there's a search bar. You're gonna want to type in Vice uh, City. There it is. Excellent. Since we're looking at Vice City, and here are the leaderboards for the GTA Vice City. You can see good old anti streaks with 12 minutes. Well, how do you do that? We're gonna go over that right now. So click on click on the video. I'm going to click on the title page, and here we are. We're now at the Vice City World Record video. All right. So how do you beat it in 12 minutes? It revolves around um, manipulating the game's memory, more or less. And I'm, I'm going to misspeak a lot, so turn on annotations. Expect to ha have some corrections because people are going to... People who actually know what they're talking about are going to watch this and get mad at me. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, yeah, this video has music. I don't necessarily want to get muted. So the first thing you'll notice, if you've watched Vice City speedruns before, you'll notice, uh, this is actually the, this is actually the English language. Um, it used to be the fastest way to beat the game it was only possible on the Japanese version, but now... Um, we're back to the English version, the international version. That's either uh, a retail copy or a Steam copy you can use to perform this uh, speed run. So you could do this on your own copy at home, unmodified, fresh out of the box, fresh install. You can do this yourself. No Japanese copy required. So of course things are things are pretty standard to begin with. Gonna want to go and head down to the Ocean Hotel. Ocean View Hotel, sorry. Not not the Ocean Hotel. <laughs> Alright, very good. Very standard stuff. Very speedy. Right to the stairs to trigger that cutscene. And now, we're gonna want to stop and look at something already. Um, Anti-streaks are our lovely player has just picked up a save icon, which is kind of weird. Why would you want to save the game? Well, it's all part of the first uh, <clears throat> chapter, so to speak, of the speedrun. So we're going to use the tools God gave us in our Windows copy to, to make some notes. And you're going to want to become familiar with these if you ever want to speedrun yourself. They're very good to have. First thing you're going to do is get Notepad. Very good. I'm going to actually change the font on this to be a little bigger so you can read it easier. There we go. Alright. So, first thing we're going to want to do is look up here at this, this number. This is the in-game clock. So we're going to take note of the time on the in-game clock when he saves. It's going to be 8.02. And we're going to want to take note of that because it, provide, it provides us an easy reference to see what happens next. So he saves the game, slot 5, good choice. And now, the next thing you'll notice, of course, saving the game 
um, <clears throat> increases the time, or it moves time forward on the in-game clock six hours. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is that this clock up here is just visual. There is another clock in the engine that you can't see that is also keeping time internally. And that's important because, for example, if you save the game a bunch of times, and then, oh nice, he got busted. I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. <clears throat> that literally does not matter. But, if you save the game a bunch of times, um, the weather pattern in the game will still be the same as if you hadn't saved a bunch of times. Which means, like for example, I save four times. That's 6, 12, 18, 24. I'm one day ahead in game. But the weather pattern is going to be the same because weather is tied to the internal clock that we cannot see. So literally this clock is just visual. Now I personally, I don't like dying or getting busted here because now he's actually, uh, what is it, 18 hours ahead? Let's see, 6, is it, is it 12 hours? I don't know. I would say something like that, but anyway, um, <clears throat> so the first thing about this speedrun that a lot of people notice is that there's a lot of nothing going on here. I'm literally skipping ahead. We're now three minutes and 45 seconds in on the speedrun. I'm literally skipping ahead. Nothing has happened. He's just standing here. Oh, now something's happening because he loads the game. Okay. So let's go, let's take a look here. When does he, when does he, uh, save his replay? Let's see. Oh, there it is. 516. Okay, I'm actually going to use, uh, the speed timer on the side here. This is 407. Okay, so I'm actually going to wipe this. Well, 802 is nice to have. So 4, 407, and now I'm going to go back and see when he saved the game. Da, 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 da. Okay, wait. I think I found it. It's let's say forty-eight seconds. Okay, For, forty-eight seconds. So roughly, roughly uh, three minutes and some change is how long he waits. Now there's another tool that God gave us to become successful speedrunners. I'm gonna boot that one up real fast. Uh, let's see. Let me get back to an appropriate time on this. Here we go. Okay, four oh seven. Uh, there's another tool that God gave us to be good speedrunners, and that's paint. Paint is very good. And I'm going to use paint a fair amount. Alright, so... Picture with me, if you will. We have a timeline. Alright, here's our timeline. <clears throat> and let's say... This timeline right here. It's going to start at... 48 seconds. Well, let's see. Uh, how long does he wait? Let's see, that's 3 minutes, 48, 508, almost, wait, what? No, 3 and a half minutes, right? 58, 08, no, 3 minutes and, oh god, <laughs> 3 minutes and, uh, I'm sorry, I just woke up, okay, 10, and then... 19, 3 minutes and 19 seconds, I got there, it, t it took me some time, okay, so we'll have it... We'll have this start at zero on the left side. And then this is 319. God, I hope that math is right. If not, expect an annotation. 319. So the reason we wait, and again, him getting busted at whatever it was, him getting busted here doesn't matter because, like I said, this clock right here is completely internal and does not matter whatsoever well sorry it's it's visual it doesn't matter whatsoever what matters is the internal clock and the internal clock can only be accelerated by actually just waiting around you know actually playing the game you know saving getting busted anything that advances this a number of hours does not matter because what matters is the amount of time the game has been live or running or what have you all right, so 
Or we got zero seconds and three minutes and 19. A rampage, if you didn't notice, lasts two minutes. We're skipping around a lot. Yeah, rampage lasts two minutes. It says it right here in English. Thank God. Two minutes. Rampage lasts two minutes. We're going to put that in text. Hmm, excuse me. Oh my god. We're going to use, what is this, Absender? Rampage lasts two minutes. That's, that's not a terrible font, but what the fuck is this G? Hold on. Can I boost that? Can I increase the size of this? This is, what is this G? This is disgusting. Let's get a, let's get a decent font, please. Good old Arial. Nothing's wrong with Arial. Alright, our rampage is two minutes, right? Easy enough. So why is this important? Well, when we save a replay, we saved a replay right here at 3 minutes and 19 seconds after the time we saved. The game has been live for 3 minutes and 19 seconds. Now we have a replay at this time with this time on the in-game internal clock. This is important because when we load the game, we are going back in time to zero seconds right here, to the time that we save the game. We load the game, and the internal clock in the game is going to be the same value as it was when we saved the game however long ago in the speedrun. So this replay is in the future, okay? So now... How long does it take them to get to... let's see... The next thing he's going to do is go to the lawyer's office and do a bunch of nonsense with loading the replay. Oh, what what is he doing? Oh, that makes sense. Never mind. Okay. That's smart. Anti streaks always got the always got the smart ideas. I like it. Okay. So he's already started the rampage. Usually uh usually I wait until I get here and I run into the marker to start it, but he he uses the cop car. That's a good strat. All right, so he's got the rampage going. Oh god, am I gonna have to explain that? Actually, yeah. What I should explain first is how to start a rampage uh, and be able to start another mission. Okay, let's explain that first. Um, hold off on this right now because we're gonna explain something else. So he gets in the cop car and you're gonna see the screen flash. Oh, there it is. You see it? You saw it? Let's back up. Let's go back in time. Let's let's use the tools God gave us. The 0.25 speed. The 25% the, the speed right now. Okay. So he's driving, and all of a sudden, bam! He's loaded his replay. And his replay is over this rampage icon. And you can pick up this icon in the replay. It's very handy. Um, replays are abused a lot in this speed run. Any speed run of this game, really, you're going to see a lot of replays. It's very handy to pick up things remotely, especially when you're picking up things remotely in the future. That's an added element of surprise. So, what he does is <clears throat> he holds his submission key, uh, Vigilante. Uh, but, well, police cars have a, a submission called Vigilante, and you can activate. And you hit that by hitting uh, your submission key, whatever that is. In my case, it's Caps Lock. So I hold Caps Lock. Let's go back again. So I hold Caps Lock, and then I hit Replay. And this is this is me talking about what I do, but Anti Streaks is doing probably the same thing. And then I, I hit Replay, and then I let go of Caps Lock while this little replay is playing. So I held it, I hit F3, I let go. Now Tommy's going to pick up the rampage. Doot, there it goes, it disappears. Tommy's picked it up, and as soon as the game leaves the replay, it's going to be active. Well, not as soon, but within 500 milliseconds, there it is. So now rampage is active, and now... Uh, the thing about this is Vigilante has been activated as well. Any second now. There it goes. You see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? Flash. Rampage. 
Boom. Vigilante. Now Vigilante is active. Vigilante activated after the Rampage. You know what that means? That means we can cancel Vigilante, and then there is an in-game value that is really important to us. We're going to go down here. It's the on... Oh god, I think it's like on mission. I think this is the actual technical term for it. It's on mission. If you're familiar with GTA games, you will know that you can only have one mission active at any given time. You start one mission, and then you either fail that mission, or you pass it. And then, and only then, can you move on to another mission. Well, speedruns kind of break the rules here. Rampages, and also Vigilante, um... These are things that trigger the on-mission variable. And of course, when you start the game, it's going to be at zero. Well, in normal gameplay, so to speak, in free roam, it's going to be at zero. And then you do something like start a rampage, and then boop, it's one. <clears throat> the thing about this is, because this is a variable, it's a, it's a boolean, actually. It's a, it's a boolean. I don't know. Someone's probably going to yell at me and say I'm wrong. But boolean means it's either going to be 0 or it's going to be 1. It, it only can ever be one of those values. 0 or 1. I need some water. Hold on. Give me a moment. Hmm. Delicious. Okay. So. Um, when we do things like activate missions, it goes to 1. When we do things like deactivate or fail missions, or pass them, it goes to zero. <clears throat> so if we start two missions at the same time, like in this instance, especially, okay, this is a mission we have control over. We, we can fail this at our leisure. You know, we can deactivate Vigilante at our leisure. Just hit the submission button, and you're done. So, let's go back again. So he activates it. All right, the Rampage is now active. On Mission is now 1. Okay? Because the Rampage is active. Vigilante also activates. Vigilante does the same thing. It changes it from 0 to 1. But it's already 1, so that's okay. That doesn't matter. Now, Vigilante Mission Level 1. Vigilante Mission Cancelled. When Vigilante is cancelled, it goes to 0. But there's a Rampage active, and a Rampage is a mission. And the thing about this is, because we cancelled Vigilante, we are now in a state where we have a mission running, we have this Rampage running, but we can do things like, you see this little L on the minimap here? We can go and pick that mission up. And that's exactly what Anti-Streaks does if we accelerate time a bit. Oh, we activated sound. <clears throat> This feels awfully fast. Maybe it's because I was in 25% speed for a while. There we go. This, this looks normal now. Okay. So, there you go. This pink marker is now active. That's because, again, on mission is zero. We can pick this up. And that's exactly what it does. So now we're picking up the mission, the party, while a rampage is going. Why is this important? Why does this matter? Well, handy dandy fact... Going back to uh, our little timeline here, handy dandy thing is about to happen. So we have the party running with a rampage going. The rampage going is really, 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 really important. Because if you'll notice, and let's use the tools God gave us, if you'll notice, bam, he hits his replay again. This is really important, because basically, we started the Rampage at, let's say, whatever time right here. Let's say right here. We started the Rampage right here. And then, doot, 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 we go forward a little bit. We go forward a little bit, and now, oh, here we are again. At whatever mark this is. What is it? 407... 449, uh, jeez, uh, we've been, let's see, it's been live for, okay, 30, 32 seconds, we're at the 32 second mark here, 
32 second mark. So basically, when we start... Oh god, actually no, that's not relevant. Sorry. Okay, when did he start the rampage? That's what's more important. When did he start the rampage? We'll say like 25 seconds, okay, to make things easy. I'm not going to go back and look. The value itself isn't relevant. So we started the rampage. Okay, let me go back again. Just, just to be sure. Okay. So he saves the replay at 3 minutes and 19 seconds. That's the value in this replay, which is what we're looking at right now. This is the replay that he saved. That's the value of the internal clock in this replay is 3 minutes and 19 seconds. And then you go back in time because you... He loaded the game back to zero, whatever this value is. And then, 25 seconds later, roughly, I'm probably wrong, it's probably like 15. 25 seconds later, he activates the Rampage. Now, um, the game knows the time that the Rampage needs to be completed by or it fails. Does that make sense? A rampage is two minutes, like I said. So that means when you start a rampage at 25 seconds on the internal clock, the game is going to look ahead and say, okay, well, I know that at two minutes and 25 seconds, the rampage needs to have been completed or it fails because you took too long to meet the objective. So you started at... 25 seconds and then you load your replay and then you hit your replay right 25 seconds and then he hits his replay the value of the internal clock in this replay is three minutes and 19 seconds and the game sees this and the game knows that three minutes and 19 seconds is greater than two minutes and 25 seconds so the game sees this and goes, oh, wait a minute. It sees this value and it goes, wait a minute. This is further in the internal clock than when the rampage was supposed to have been completed. So the rampage needs to fail. So we need to fail the rampage. And what happens when you fail a rampage? Well, your on mission goes to zero, right? Because you failed a mission. So that's exactly what happens. If you'll notice now, this is right after he played his replay, where the internal clock is at 3 minutes and 19 seconds. That the little L is back. The little mission marker is back. The timer is gone. The timer is gone because the rampage failed. And the handy dandy thing about this is now, he's going to start the rampage again. Probably using Vigilante. No, he steps out of the car. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so you can see right there, Rampage failed. Rampage failed. Because the game sees this value in, in the replay, and it's like, holy shit, fail, fail the replay. Fail, no, not fail the replay. Fail, fail the Rampage right now. Okay? So he does it again. And he does it while standing in the marker. And he picks up the Rampage before the marker for the mission triggers. Marker for the mission triggers now, and the Rampage is going to trigger now. Which means on mission is going to be one because two missions have started at roughly the same time which means on mission is going to be one and then yeah, the replay i mean not the replay the the mission starts and hold on okay mission starts he's getting beat up by a cop oh man he does swag strats actually he fails it then activates it well he plays the replay so it sees the 319 then he activates the rampage again and bam he steps in the marker and the rampage activates. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this process continues for a few a few more seconds. Fail the rampage. Start the rampage. Another instance of the party. Fail the rampage. Start the rampage. Yet, yet again. Fail the rampage. Start the rampage. Start the mission. Blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Okay, so why is this important? Why do we have to do this? Why is this a part of the speedrun? <clears throat> well, um, basically, it is a setup to the, the essential trick that you'll see later in the run. There are 128 spaces for scripts in the game. 
128 scripts can be running maximum at any given time. What's a script? I don't fucking know. I really don't. I'm sorry. You're going to have to ask someone more technical than me. My explanation is already rudimentary as it is. But when the game starts, at the start of the game, when you're standing in that goddamn alleyway with your Admiral and your Foggio, there are 51 scripts running. 51. And, in memory, they fill up from the largest value to the lowest. Starts with last. So each each one of these 128 spaces for scripts has an ID, right? 128 IDs. It starts with ID 127 because it uses zero as a space as well. So 127. So 51 scripts. We've got another great tool that God gave us. It's called a calcul calculator. Um, it's for simple-minded people like me that don't know how to add or subtract okay 76 so we've got scripts running from id 127 all the way to id 76 now what we want to do the important part of this speed run is to get it so we have a certain number of scripts running a certain number of ids filled to the brim with scripts so completing the party Eight times, which is what the speedrun is going to do. You complete the party eight times. You start it eight times, and you complete it eight times. What that does is it's going to add seven scripts to memory because it's going to remove one party script from memory. It's going to remove one party script from memory, and then it's going to create eight new ones for the mission after the party. So now he's got the party started eight times, okay? So bear with me, 76 minus 7, I believe, moves one script from, yeah, this is going to be, I'm not shitting you, 69. So we need to have scripts running from ID 127 to ID 69. I know it's a meme, let's, let's, let's be serious about this, this is an educational video. <clears throat> So that's what's going to happen when the mission is complete. And the reason for this, I'll say it now, the reason we're doing all of this is because that we're going to use a variable as an address. And the property by script that runs needs to be running in ID 69, which is what we're going to do. So doing, doing the mission as normal, things are kind of a little different because you have eight of the mission script running on top of each other. And it actually means an essential part of the speed run is about to happen because of this very fact. So he stops and gets the bike because the bike is speedy, speedy, zoom, zoom, and it's real fast. All right. Now, um, this is a little weird right here, what's about to happen. You're going to see the same cutscene eight times. And he's going to wait a few frames into the cutscene before skipping it to make things a little more stable. For some reason, when you try to skip it, as soon as it comes up, sometimes it gets a little out of hand and it'll, um, it'll crash the game, actually. So waiting a few frames and then skipping the cutscene is, is very good, very safe. It makes things a little more stable. So what is that? Five, six, seven, okay. <clears throat> now... All right, we're going to go back to our handy-dandy chalkboard, our little paint. What you're about to see is kind of weird. Okay, so right here, part in the blood, there are eight Mercedes standing in the same place. There are eight little Mercedes standing in the same place. Oh, my God. All right, there we go. Okay, so... Where I'm going to draw eight circles, okay? Um, can I, like, duplicate this or copy-paste or... Oh, my God. Okay. So let me just draw eight individual fucking circles. Ugh, that's awful. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Four, five, six, 
seven, eight. All right, they get progressively larger. Whatever, don't don't circle shame. What was that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Okay, that's eight. Excellent. Thank God, I'm correct. Um, give me a second here. Oh God, I want to erase my dots. All right, great, great. We got eight circles. Uh, each one of these represents uh, a Mercedes MPC that we have here. <clears throat> we have eight mission scripts running. Don't forget that. That's important. That's why this is happening. That's why we have eight Mercedes, because eight mission scripts are active. Now, only one of these Mercedes, Mercedeses can be used to pass the mission. Because that Mercedes, hold on, because that Mercedes has special values tied to her that makes her the only one that's eligible to pass the mission, so to speak. So, here's the way this works. Only one of these NPCs can have these special properties at any given time. So, <clears throat> the first one is spawned, right? The first one spawns, and it's given these special properties. Boom! It's got the little red dot. It's the chosen one. Then, the second one spawns, and it's given these special properties. So what happens to the first one's special properties? Well, it's erased. It's wiped. Because only one of these can have a special property at a given time. But then, the third one it's given these special properties. And what happens? It's erased from the second one. And this goes on. You get the idea. It goes on until we reach the end of the line, so to speak. It hops from this one to this one to that, 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 that. And then this one is the one we want. The eighth one. The last one to spawn. This one. This one is the one we want. And... It's actually uh, handy because when they are stacked on top of each other like this, when they're standing here and they're stacked on top of each other like this, when you shoot them, the first one in the line dies, right? That's the first one we hit. So you can technically, you can kill each one of these without consequence, because to the game, these are just standard NPCs now. They they don't matter anymore. These seven, they don't matter a damn bit. They can go... It, it doesn't matter what you do to them, as long as this one, as long as the eighth one, because this one's the chosen one, as long as this one stays in play, alive and healthy, it doesn't matter what you do to these other seven. So one... Oh god, how many is he gonna kill? It looks like he kills all seven. I don't even know. No, he's got two alive still. Um, I think the Mercedes he wants is actually going to be this one. I'm not sure. Based on my experience with this... Uh, yeah. Based on my experience with this category. Okay, so he picked up the wrong Mercedes. He picked up... He picked up this one. He picked up number seven. Not number eight. He didn't pick up the chosen one. He picked up number seven. What happens... Um, this NPC is still a follower, so it'll still follow Tommy around. It'll still get in vehicles with Tommy and everything. But you know it's not the Mercedes you want because she gets on the bike and she doesn't say anything. She doesn't say the lines given to her. So you can just safely kill this one too, which is what he does. And you pick up this one, and she says the lines. And that's how you know. This is the one that you want. This is the NPC that is going to be the chosen one. And this is the only one. You bring this one to the uh, to the pole position, the club that she wants to go to. You bring her to the pole position, and that passes the mission for you. So now, now, eight instances of the party have been successfully passed. And I know this, and you can know it too, because of our little money counter up here. You start the game as... You all know, with zero dollars to your name, you pass the mission, one hundred dollars is your reward. But if you look up here, you have eight hundred dollars now, because you passed the mission 
eight times. You can see, you can actually see this. Zero, no money, zero dollars. Pass the mission. Eight, eight hundred money, eight hundred dollars. Eight, yeah, okay. So, the next thing I expect them to do, I've never actually watched this run before. Um, the next thing I expect them to do is this hotel that's across the way of... Um, of the lawyer's office right here. This is this is the lawyer's office right here. This is uh, back alley brawl is going to be this little pink glow. He's not actually going to pick up this mission though. He's going to stop. Oh, never mind. That's right. Okay, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We don't do that anymore. Um, I mean we do, but he's going to do it later. Okay, so the very next step in the speed run is the critical moment. The critical moment. That's a uh, Nightcrawler reference, if you've ever seen that movie. It's very good. Okay, so the next thing that happens... Boom! Hello! His bike is actually in the shop. That's kind of awkward. Um, the hardware store clerk setup. Oh, baby. This is so good. Okay. So, I am going to use my chalkboard still to draw this out for you guys. Okay. So, we have our little hardware store clerk. He's going to be our black dot, okay? No, he's going to be black. All right. Around our hardware store clerk is a radius. A radius in which he will exist. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, I got to draw the radius first. That's awkward. Okay. That's a little elliptical. There we go. That's more circular. Very good. No. Okay. Now let's draw the little hardware store clerk guy. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Excellent. That's roughly centered. Right? There we go. That's a little more centered. Okay. So this is our hardware store clerk guy. Okay. Right here. And around him is this radius, okay? This black outline. When Tommy, the player character, let's say this red dot, enters the radius zone, he will spawn when you cross into the radius zone, and he will despawn when you exit it, okay? Now, there is a value in memory, tied with this guy. And we can not necessarily manipulate it directly, but we can do a setup and force the value through player input to be at a number that will warp us to the end of the game later on. The thing about it is you can never know exactly what this value is. I can just tell you right now, though, I'll write it down, I'll write it out. This value, uh, is in, it's in milliseconds, and for a warp to the end of the game to happen, we want the value to be, to be, to be between 53.475 and 53.716. These, this is a range of acceptable values for a warp to the end of the game to happen. And this is in milliseconds, by the way. So you can put little dots here and here to help visualize it. It's 53 seconds point 475 and 53 seconds point 716. Those are the, that's the range of acceptable values. So what, what is actually this value I'm talking about? Well... It all starts with despawning the hardware store clerk. You can see this little pink marker right here. That means he's spawned. That means he exists. You can walk into his marker. You can purchase his wares up here. He's got nice things for you, like a, like a hammer and a cleaver. And it looks like a baseball bat. I've actually never used this shop. Have you? You probably haven't either. I mean, who wants to buy shit from a hardware store in Vice City? You know, give me the guns. Give me the M4. Give me the minigun and shit. Okay, so. Now that Anti-Streaks is robbing him, 
He is now despawned. You, you can no longer visit the store. You can no longer buy his goods. You know, he's, he's closed, all right? He's got more important shit to worry about, like the dude with a gun, okay? <clears throat> now, Anti-Streaks is going to rob him. And he's going to rob him until he gets three stars, which is the max amount of money you can get out of him, is uh, four, four go-arounds. You know, it starts with 50, and then it gives him 100. That gives you a star. It gives them uh, 150, that's two, and then 1,000. Um, <clears throat> well, gives them more, 600, whatever. Y you get the idea. Um, money is an important part of this run as well. I'll explain that later. But now Anti-Streaks is going to leave the store, and he's going to leave the radius. He, I, I'm guessing he has a visual reference for it. My visual reference was different. Uh, if you'll watch my runs, I do something a little different than he he does. I also rob him, but I go over here. I go this way to where this old lady is walking. I run over here and I, I use this thing right here as a visual reference. I don't know what he's about to do. But, um, okay. So he leaves the radius. He leaves the radius. Bam. And he turns around. He's going to go back in. Which is fine, we'll talk about that later. So, Anti-Streaks has now robbed him, and he leaves the radius. And when you leave the radius, the exact frame you leave the radius is when the time starts. Okay? The time starts, and the time's going to start at zero. And it's going to be, fifty again, 53.475 to 53.716 when you want to re-enter the radius so that you get the correct value, hopefully. There's actually, I think it's only like 20% of variables within this range will cause a warp to the end of the game, which is pretty shit, because if you could use any radius between these two values, that'd be amazing. But unfortunately, about 80% of those crash the game. <clears throat> okay, so... The thing about this variable that I'm talking about here, it updates only when the barrier is crossed, when you enter the radius. So he leaves the radius, and when he leaves the radius, the value is going to be, well, I don't know. When he, when he enters the radius the first time, when you enter the radius for the first time, when he's on his bike driving up the road and he enters the radius, when he enters the radius, the value... Oh my god, that's the worst arrow I've ever made in my life. Holy shit, let's try again. There we go, that's a little better. But when he enters the radius, the value is going to be something like, I don't know, 434, uh, four, four, 446, 726. It's going to be something like that, okay? It's going to be some large number that's not helpful to us. It doesn't matter. You know, it's fine, whatever. Um, so he enters, and that's going to be the value. Okay? And it's going to stay there. This value only updates when you enter the barrier. Okay? That's very important to know. And then when he robs him and despawns him, he leaves the barrier. He leaves the radius. And the moment he leaves the radius is when uh, the time starts, right? is when you have to start counting up from zero. Because when he when he re-enters the radius, let's say, uh, two and a half seconds later, okay? Let's say he re-enters the radius two and a half seconds later, which is fine, by the way. You can re-enter the radius while all of this is going. While all of this is going on. So let's say he re-enters the radius uh, 250 milliseconds later, okay? So when he re-enters the radius, the value is now going to be 250. And it's going to stay at 250. It doesn't have it doesn't update live, you know, when you're in the radius. It only updates when you again enter the barrier. So he re-enters the radius and he does this to get his bike probably, which is still there. That's lucky. Um and now he's going to leave the radius again. Which means this value is still going to be whatever it is when you cross the barrier after leaving the barrier. 
I'm hoping what I say makes sense. It's midnight. It's almost 1 o'clock now, actually. I've been talking quite a lot. But anyway. Um, so his next goal is going to be to make a replay over this property buy icon down here. Zoomy zoomy. He's down here. Three stars is kind of shit, by the way. Okay, he's going to go pick up a package. Um, like I said before, money is an important part of this run, and so uh, packages are important as well. Um, he's going to pick up two packages during the run. This is the first one. The reason you pick these up, you can see, this is $1,900 up here now. Each package gives you $100, and you want $3,000 by the end of this run. Or rather, you want $3,000 before you attempt to perform the warp. Because uh, the property that he's about to make a replay over costs $3,000. And we want to buy this property. So he's going to rob another store and pick up another package, and that's the fastest way to $3,000. Now then, um, like I said before, you can access icons remotely through replays. And a property icon is one of these. And this property is essential to the warp because, I mentioned this earlier, we want the property buy script to be a script with ID 69, which is, in fact, what we have set up for right now. Because the variable that we are going to use as an address it's going to be hopefully between these values, and it's hopefully going to be one of the 20% that will warp you to the end of the game. This is a variable that we are going to use as an address with the property by script. <clears throat> because for whatever reason, um, when you have a property by a script running in ID 69, and then you start Vigilante in the cutscene, it uses the hardware store clerk despawn value, I don't know what to call this, as a variable, and these are the variables that start the last mission. This range of variables. I don't know if what I just said made sense. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, so... He's got a setup now for the replay over the property icon. And now he's going to go back. Where? Oh man, this is maximum YOLO. He's going to pick up the second package right there. That's, that's, oof, man. Strats, dude. I don't pick that up until the jewelry store. That's a little safer. Um, so. He's going to... Oh, wow, this is really... That's really fast. Okay. So, he's got a pretty good idea of where this where this uh, radius is, right? So he's driving towards it with his PCJ, and then he stops, like, right here. And then he's going to wait. He's going to wait because he is counting probably with this timer right here, or, I don't know what, maybe another one. any Like a stopwatch, you know, a phone timer, anything of the sort. He starts that timer when he leaves the radius the first time after despawning him by robbing him, okay? Like I said, the timer starts when you leave the radius for the first time after despawning him. That's probably when he started his own little external timer, you know? Or, fuck, I mean, like smoke signal, whatever he wants to do to keep time. And now he's picked up two packages and he made a, he's made a replay over the property buy icon. And he's back. He is back. He has returned because he is ready to re-enter the radius and get the value to one of the ones that will warp him to the end of the game. So he stops a little short of this. Uh, he doesn't have to wait very long because 53 seconds is... A pretty short time, all things considered, in this speedrun. Well, I mean, it's actually roughly, like, a little less than 10% of the run, but you get what I'm saying. Um, Alright, he stops there, and then he, he moves forward a little bit, and this is about roughly when he's re-entered the radius. Zerp, and now he's back in the radius. Which is great. Because now the value is going to update. 
and I believe this is one of the good ones right here. I believe that's one of the values that will actually warp you to the end of the game. Is 53,656 is, I mean, it might be the value he has. I don't know that for sure. I'm just guesstimating. But anyway, you re-enter the radius, bam, and that's the value that uh, this address now has. Or this variable now has, or whatever you want to fucking call it. I don't know, it's late, I'm tired, this is kind of a bad video. So now that this is done, now that he's re-entered the radius at the appropriate time, this value is now frozen at this, again, until we re-enter the zone, and we don't want to do that. We do not want to re-enter the zone again, we just want to leave and not come back, which is what anti-streaks is going to do. We just want to leave because that will just leave this va uh, value at 53,656. And that will be used as an address on the property by script. And it'll warp us to the end of the game. Which is what's going to happen here. Very, very shortly. Get ready. It'll sneak up on you. Maybe not. But the idea is um, he's going to head north. Dodge a bunch of cop cars! Jesus, dude, making me clench over here. He's gonna go to the jewelry store, which is right up here. Yoink. He's gonna, he's gonna like, fumble around a little bit, and he's gonna rob this guy for $1,000, and then he's gonna have 3000 This is pretty much the easy part of the run. Just wait. He's gonna get $600 now. Bam! He's got 3000 and he got pretty lucky with cop cars because you want to have a cop car. You want to have a cop car. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Okay. You want to have a cop car because vigilante is actually going to be what triggers uh, this variable to be run. I couldn't tell you why. Again, I'm not a pro. I, well, I mean, I'm good at the game. I'm not good at the internal shit. I, like, I'm an actual buffoon when it comes to this nonsense. I'm probably one of the worst people to be making this video, which could be, you know, demonstrated by its quality. But he gets in a cop car. Man, that's YOLO. He's just going to sit there. Uh, he gets in the cop car, and he's going to... He's going to hold down his submission key. He's going to hold down, in my instance, like I said earlier, caps lock. He's going to hold that down. Hold down caps lock. And now he's going to start trying to buy the property through the replay. Let's use the tools God gave to us. So now you can see this replay. He's activating it. He's trying to pick up this property icon in the replay. It could be a little tricky. It looks like he might have gotten it. Nope. It could be a little tricky. There we go. He, he's bought the replay. Now the fade-out is going to happen. And now the fade-up is happening. He's bought the... He, he hasn't bought the replay. I'm sorry. He's bought the property from inside the replay. It's going to warp him to the property in the cop car. And he's still got the submission key held down. He's still got Vigilante held down. That's really important because this... Um... <clears throat> This cutscene activates the on mission variable. It makes it a one. Okay, we're in a cutscene right now, and for some reason it triggers on mission to be one. So while holding down vigilante before this happens, when he presses it down before getting into this cutscene, that means when he releases it, the game is going to start Vigilante. Because he started pressing it before on mission uh, 1 happened. So he's going to release it, and the game is going to start Vigilante for him. Because he started holding it before on mission 0 happened. Hopefully that, makes, hopefully that made sense. Now, he's going to cancel it during this cutscene, and when he cancels it, one of three things are going to happen, depending on the value that you got when you did this setup. Depending on what value you got when you re-entered the radius for the last time, one of three things will happen. The game will either crash. BAM! Too bad. Start over. It's a shame it happens a lot in this run because crashes usually happen like 80% of the time. 
this is why I don't really care to run it anymore. Um, either that's going to happen, or, or, and this is the good outcome. This is the this is the ching. That is a horrible check mark. Good lord, ching. That's much better. This is the good one. Uh, the final mission's cutscene will begin playing. You'll essentially warped right to the last cutscene, the end of the game. Or, and this one is kind of like so-so, I guess. We'll just make it like a yellow line. This is this is kind of so-so. Um, the final mission is unlocked, which is which is good news, you know, which is ah, God, which is good news, but. It's unlocked and nothing else. That means you actually have to go all the way to the final mission marker, which is in the mansion. You have to go all the way there to activate the final mission. And that wastes a lot of time. That takes a lot of time. And at this point, the run is so optimized that you want the final mission cutscene to begin playing right away. If you don't get that tough luck reset, because there's no way you're going to set world record if you don't get that. So, as soon as he cancels Vigilante, we're going to see uh, what value he got. Spoiler alert, it's a world record, so I guarantee you it's one of the good ones. And it is. Keep your friends close. There you go. Bam. He took quite some time to trigger that uh, cutscene. <clears throat> Another thing you'll notice about the speedrun is that dudes actually spawn during the final mission, which is unusual, to say the least. Um, usually, if you don't, like, move, especially if you don't move your mouse, then you won't trigger dudes to spawn here. So, dudes are actually spawning, despite, you know, not really moving your mouse or moving very far. So that's that's kind of odd, but anyway, you wait a set amount of time. Of course, this entire mission is on a timer. It takes roughly like 2 minutes and what, 23 seconds, I believe. So now Lance has spawned. And uh there's a unique part of this run here, uh, a unique way to kill Lance that I've never had to fucking encounter before. Is uh, your th this is actually a barrier right here? There's a barrier. Um, you can't actually leave the mansion for whatever reason, so you're kind of like stuck here. But if you get up against this barrier, this invisible wall that ends like right here, you know, if you get up against it, you could actually shoot them through the wall and everything is fine, which is good because shooting Lance is like really important part of the run. If you don't shoot Lance, you can't beat the game. I mean, I wouldn't know, I'm just assuming, but anyway. Boing, boing, boing. He's, Anti Streaks is just doing work here. Knocking him down. Reload. The first person view, what the shit? <laughs> this dude's got some avant garde strats, let me tell you what. Uh, end of the game coming up here. Cutscene should happen in a second now. Boing. There it is. Oh god, I really hope I don't start saying boing, like, as a thing. Oh my god, could you fucking imagine? No one would watch my stream anymore. Uh, yeah, this is the final final boss. There's more dudes spawn in this version than usual. It's kind of weird. But anyway. Dead. He retimed it, by the way, and it's actually 12 minutes flat. What the fuck, anti-streaks? Jesus, give some leeway to the end of your VOD. God damn. Okay. 1201, he retimed it, of course, it's 12 minutes flat. But anyway, that is that. Hopefully everything I said made sense. You know, I, I used the tools God gave us to, to you know, explain speed runs and whatnot. So hopefully all of it made sense. I know you guys have been waiting a while for this, and I wanted to do a more formal video. But, man, like... Making videos is hard, especially on top of all the shit I got to do to begin with anyway. Like, man, I just don't have time. But anyway, um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to comment. I I will be, like, reading the, the comments every now and again, so be sure to uh, check in there. And uh, before someone asks, uh, the reason the value is this 
is because these are the values that warp you to KYFC, the end of the game, keeping your friends close. You could theoretically warp to uh, any mission in the game you want as long as this value is correct. Like, other variables are probably going to be, like, not this high. This is actually uh, pr pretty high on the list, but um, you could warp anywhere. Like, in the seven assets, for example, you could just warp to Shakedown and start the run from there. But I don't do that because uh, warping is kind of frustrating because it crashes a lot. Anyway, uh, that's that. I hope you liked it. I'm sorry it took so long. This video is pushing an hour now, which is kind of ridiculous. But <laughs> to explain a 12-minute speed run, like, get the fuck out of here, Ben. Jesus Christ. Learn to be more concise, but hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. I didn't really, like, have a script or anything. I just kind of read, you know, off the top of the dome. I, I don't think I'm the best at explaining things when I'm just, you know, spitting off the top of the dome. So I should have made notes, but I wanted to get this video done. Anyways, I'm, I'm done ranting. I'm sorry. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out my stream if you like. I, I play speedruns a lot, uh, five days a week. So, uh, twitch.tv slash kzfru. Twitch.tv slash kz... Uh, that's not it. Shit. Twitch.tv slash... There it is. Typing is hard, man. Uh, thanks for being here. Adios. Good night.